Tower Records presents The Mark of the Man Wolf. The amazing Spider Man has many friends, but Jonah Jameson, publisher of the powerful Daily Bugle, isn't one of them. What is this, Robertson? Be kind to criminals, Day? Now, Jonah, all I said was we'd better be sure about our facts before we publicly condemn Spider Man. If it turns out he is innocent. Innocent? Maybe you don't understand, Robertson. A man has been killed, a man who happened to be a good friend of mine, and I believe that wall-crawling menace is responsible. I know it. So get this, Robertson. Since I can't hire someone to bring that killer in, I intend to see justice done another way, by making the public demand his capture at once. I'm only your city editor, Jonah, but I think you're making a great mistake. Wait a second, Robbie. We've got company. I'll talk to you later then, Jonah. Hi, Dad. Thought I'd drop by to pick you up for dinner. It's time you met my fiance, Christine Saunders. Fiance? Well, I must say, it's about time. Uh, we were finished, weren't we, Robbie? If you say so, Jonah. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Sorry, Robbie. This is my son, John. John's just retired from astronautics. He was one of the last men to make a moonwalk. Son, this is Joe Robertson, my city editor. Glad to meet you, John. Same here, Mr. Robertson. Sorry we've got to rush off. Moments later, in the hall outside. Dad, would you... Would you excuse me a moment? I... I... John, are you all right, son? You're white as a sheet and you're trembling. I... I'm sorry, Dad. Got a touch of the flu. The flu? You better take care of yourself, John. Like I said, Dad, sorry. I've been under a strain. I'd better get home. Later this same evening, in a brownstone overlooking the Hudson River, a door opens, releasing a sliver of yellow light and the stumbling form of a young man. Nothing I can do. It's happening again. I'm changing. Changing. And in several seconds, we see before us a man-wolf. <laughs> Whoever was present in this creature a moment ago is <laughs> Now there is only an animal seeking someone. It runs through the darkness. Now and then it climbs and leaps from roof to roof as it hunts its quarry. And that quarry is... Man, one particular human. A head, the man wolf thinks. The one I hunt is a head. One final leap, and he looks across at the human being he seeks. And in one sleep motion, the man wolf leaps. What in the name of heaven? Who are you and what's the meaning of this? Do you realize who I am? The name is Jonah Jameson, my friend, and I'll have you know J. Jonah Jameson is not the kind of man to be amused by some sort of infantile man. I demand an explanation for this, this ridiculous costume. I'm warning you, I'm warning you. It is then, of course, that Jameson realizes the creature before him is not wearing a costume. And it is then, naturally, that J. Jonah Jameson becomes afraid. And by then, you see, it's already far too late. Good Lord in heaven, no! We hate to leave J. Jonah Jameson at a time like this. But a few minutes earlier, in another part of the city, Peter Parker, boy student, who is otherwise known as Spider-Man, is passing a newsstand. One glimpse of the Daily Bugle and... That does it. This time, Jameson's gone too far. The Spider-Man Menace, a new series by J. Jonah Jameson. Every time something happens in this town, Jameson blames me. According to Mr. Warren, Spider-Man should be hunted down like a mad dog. Innocent till proven guilty. Remember that, Jameson? That's supposed to be the way we live. Why don't you leave me alone, Jameson? Why don't you leave me alone? I've had it, Jameson. You want me guilty? You've got it. I'll show you a menace, Jameson. You just better hope your insurance is paid up, buddy. Because, mister, you're going to need it. I never asked to be bitten by that blasted radioactive spider. But I was, JJJ. And I've tried to make the best of it. But you, you just won't see that, will you? Maybe after tonight you'll be a little saner, JJJ. Maybe after you get a taste of what my wedding can really do, you'll leave me alone. In some people, anger can burn for hours. But in others, it lasts only a minute or two. That's the way it is with Spider-Man, sometimes. Luckily for J. Jonah Jameson, this is one of those times. By coincidence, Spider-Man seems to have arrived at Jameson's apartment just at the right moment. Now, that's a kick in the head. Either Jameson's taken to keeping pets or... Or I just saw a werewolf. Spider-Man, you're in this too. In case you had... <laughs> I just saved your life. You... 
say, Jonah, I didn't think you were so lovable. I'd say White Fang here had a grudge against you. Think about it, Jameson. Have you insulted any real wolves lately? They don't scare me a bit. I've been spoiling for a good fight, and it's about time I... Oh! Our hero isn't faring too well. Look out, Spider-Man. Look out! Spider-Man, unconscious. It wouldn't be fair to call Jonah Jameson a coward. But at this moment, he is frightened halfway to death. But not frightened enough to resist a snarling man-wolf. What? What do you want with me? Ah! Why me? I... I've never done anything to you. <laughs> never attacked... attacked you. Why did... did you pick me? As though an answer, the man-wolf backs off. And Jameson's eyes draw down to him, and he sees what he has not seen before. Man stares at Wolf, and Wolf stares in turn. And something passes between the two. A wordless communication. A plea for help. Then, without another sound, the man-wolf springs from the window, leaving behind him one very quiet, middle-aged entrepreneur and a slowly stirring Spider-Man. Jonah, what happened to tall, dark, and hairy? Don't tell me you beat them all by your lonesome. If that gets out, we'll have to put you up against the heavyweight chain. Say, what's the deal, Jameson? Where are those snappy comebacks? You're not going after him, Spider-Man. I won't allow it. You won't what? After that character tried to kill you? That doesn't matter. It's not important. If you attack him, I'll make you pay, you wall-crawling menace. Look, I'm not your biggest fan, but that monster... Spider-Man, I swear to you. If you move one muscle against that creature, I'll report this as an attempt on my life by you. Am I clear? Loud and clear. Next time, remind me not to play Good Samaritan. Some people have a weird sense of gratitude. Grateful? How can I be grateful to the man I hate most in the world? How can I be grateful when the mad killer he saved me from is my son? Hours pass. The man-wolf leaps and lunges from roof to roof, searching it can sense its prey. It seems like no other the man wolf has ever sought. The one who attacked me, who sought to kill me. He is there. The one who must die. Funny. He started this evening all knotted up. Now I I feel kind of loose. It was a fight with the man wolf. Somehow it released all my tensions, worked out all my anger. Almost. I can dig the world. You spoke too soon, Spider-Man. Too soon. Oh, no, not the man-wolf again. What are you doing here? If you're looking for a fight. Look out! You're pushing us over the edge. We're going to fall. He was working up with a blast in that tongue newspaper of his, but even Jim 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 couldn't pay a man to go this far, not to the point of suicide. For real, fun. Doesn't quite explain why you want to attack me. But then, as our puzzled hero chances to glance down at his struggling assailant. Wait a minute. I see you. But where? I can't remember where. Whoops. I blew it. I lost my attention, my grip, and next on the list is my life. But a new element is added to the picture. The moon. It's setting. And the that means you're due for a transformation. Thought. I didn't realize what's going to happen when the moon goes down and you split. Oh, sorry, you're not getting off that easy. Suddenly, you've caught my interest with that pendant thing. And there's no way I'm letting you slip out of my hands until... I a knock on the head you gave me a couple of hours ago in Jameson's pad. Oh, my head. Come on, Parker, you've got to snap out of it. You've got to think... Where have you seen that pendant before? Where? 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 Though he isn't aware of it, our hero is on the right track, and so is a certain publisher. This is my son's apartment. All I can do is pray that I'm wrong. John? Son, are you there? Blasted boy, answer me! Oh, dear Lord, that costume. I'd recognize it anywhere. It's true, then. My son is a man-wolf. John! John, wake up! I demand an explanation! At once! Dad, is that you? Of course it's me, John. And I'm alone. Now, will you tell me what's happened to you? What sort of insanity? I wish I were insane, Dad. It'd be easier to accept than this. 
For a moment, Jonah J. Jameson stares at the man he calls his son. And when he speaks again, his voice is softer. Tell me, John. Please. I want to help. If only you could. There's nothing you or anyone can do. This is my nightmare. I've got to get out of it myself, just as I got into it, all by myself. It all started six months ago at Cape Canaveral with the takeoff of a special unscheduled movement. It was the same as the public like every way It would be mine. Back on Earth, I had a friend who worked in the quarantine center. With a little coaxing, I got him to borrow the moon rock for me. I had my rock made into a pendant, and I took to wearing it around my neck. Didn't think much about it at first. Until one night, I was taking the turnpike up to New York for a late dinner date with my fiancée, Christine. Something happened to me. Something inexplicable. That's funny. Suddenly I feel tired, exhausted. Mustn't be getting enough sleep. Either that or it's this blasted night driving. It wasn't the night driving. It was the moon. The sudden light touched me. I glanced up, and it was then that it began. The pendant, glowing, something about the moon. Lord in heaven, what's happening to me? Every month since then, I've been transformed. And to date... None of my efforts to stop that transformation have succeeded. Not even the radiation suit I had made to cut out the lunar rays. The first time I wore it, last night, the suit came apart. Just like my chances to see this madness through alive. Don't talk like that, son. It's obvious you haven't thought this out at all. Why not just take off the pendant? Don't you think I've thought of that, Dad? I have tried to remove the stone, but it's too late. It's grafted itself to my skin, permanently. Seven hours have passed. Seven hours. And now it's time to get on the trail of the man-wolf. In another part of the city, at that certain brownstone, we find... It's not like John to ignore a date. I hope he isn't sick. He has been acting oddly these past few weeks. Hmm, that's funny. And I can hear the bell ringing upstairs. And if that isn't John up in the window, I need glasses. He wants to pretend I'm not here? All right, I'm not here. And upstairs. Now it's your turn, Dad. Better leave. Something changes in me when I become that thing. I want to hurt the people I love, like Christine and like you. Now, son, if you're trying to tell me the reason you attacked me was to kill me, that's utter nonsense. You wanted my help. Don't you see that, John? And you, you couldn't stop yourself, your animal self, from... From... <laughs> Meanwhile, a few blocks away, Spider-Man starts on his moonlight journey. Hurry, Spider-Man, hurry! Great, what a good night's sleep can do. I almost feel like myself again. Now, what was going through my mind? A pendant. A pendant. Hey, wait a minute. My subconscious must have been working overtime because it just put two and two together and came up with four. That costume the man-wolf was wearing... It wasn't fabric. It was some sort of insulation material, the kind used on spacesuits for astronauts. And it just hit me who I know that has an astronaut's son. And who was attacked by a werewolf in astronaut clothing? J. Jonah Jameson. A quick glance in the Manhattan telephone directory tells our hero what he needs to know, and so... Maybe I'll have some good luck for a change. Bingo! Looks like I've hit the jackpot. It's the man-wolf. Here we go again, Wolfie. This time, I have a theory to try out. It's my guess that pendant is what's making you a werewolf. And so it has to come off. Even if I have to tear it off. Spider-Man, what's happening to him? He's... he's changing. Dear Lord, I didn't realize the pendant had grafted itself onto his skin. The transformation begins. And the identity of the monster becomes apparent, all too painfully apparent. John, son, are you all right? He's just fine, Jameson, now that this thing's off him. Better get him a doctor, though. Fast. A doctor? What? The publicity? Publicity? Your son's life was at stake, not to mention the lives of people he might have killed. Let's hope we stopped him in time. Johnny, are you okay? 
Mr. Jameson, is he okay? Answer her, Jameson. Tell her everything's real swell. Maybe someday you'll even begin to believe it yourself. Spider-Man, wait! I... Save it for the papers, Jonah. Save it for tomorrow. And so ends another adventure of the amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man.